Hey y'all, how's it going? How y'all doing? Um, okay, so I know I don't get on here and really make videos all that much anymore. Um, I kind of feel like I said everything that I wanted to talk about as far as doctrines go um, for Jehovah's Witnesses, but someone had commented, I guess, on one of the last videos I made that uh, was 10 months ago, and it was called My Crazy Day, A Crazy Week or something, and um, I had to rewatch the video because I, I don't even, this sounds really bad, I don't even remember making that video. Um, but after watching it, I remember what was going on at during that time. And so I had mentioned that my son had just been diagnosed with COVID and my father-in-law had been diagnosed with COVID. And we had just put our beloved boo-boo down. And we had just gotten two kittens. Um, so it, it, things got so much more crazy after that video. Um, that was August of last year. That was right at the beginning of the kids' school year. So my son, who brought, we think he brought it home from, from school. Um, we tried to, we tried to, what's the word? Separate him. <laughs> I can't think right now. We tried to separate him from the rest of us um, so that none of us would get sick. But him and... Uh, long story short all five of us ended up getting covid and it was the bad one um i what was it the delta i don't know anymore what strain it was but it was the bad one and we were all sick at the same time my husband ended up getting pneumonia as well and he had to go to the hospital and he was in the hospital for 11 days and he came close to to dying at least that's what the doctors say and he was put on their strongest um, oxygen machines he had to lay on his stomach um, for several days. He couldn't get out of bed. They, I wasn't able to go visit him. Um, I would FaceTime him and they, they would just hear that loud oxygen noise in the background. So it was kind of hard to hear him when I would talk to him. But um, I feel like that Time is such a blur because, you know, my kids got over it really quick and they were able to go back to school. Um, for my husband, it, it took a long time. Um, he came home after 11 days. That That's a whole different story in itself. Um, I remember um, still trying to give my two new kittens their medication. They had a 10-day medication for their little pneumonia that they had and upper respiratory infection. So I was having to give each of them two different medicines twice a day and I felt like crap. I mean, I, it was like I had a different symptom every other day and I felt like it was elongated for like two weeks. But I, one day I felt like my throat was sore and scratchy. The next day I felt like um, 
my, my lungs were hurting. I had to use the um, inhaler. Uh, the next day I, I got nauseated. The next day I had this headache. At, but throughout the whole time I had zero energy and I had like this constant dizzy feeling right here in my forehead. So I lost my sense of smell and it was it was a very dark um, time because you know my husband and I we've been together for 20 years and we have never gone that long without seeing each other or you know that many days without sleeping in the same bed and so the nights and the days were just kind of like meshed in with each other. I, I don't really remember um, a lot about that time, just that I would wake up and say, okay, give the cats their medicine. Okay, you need to eat something. Okay, take your medicine. Okay, you, you need to go back to sleep. Oh, you're bored. Oh, let me try and work a little bit because I'm just here at home. And then I would log in on my laptop for about 30 minutes and I would just feel like that dizziness would get really bad. I would feel so exhausted. I just like couldn't, I just couldn't handle it. So I would have to log off. It, it was just, I don't wish that on anybody. Um, and I would get, a call from my husband's doctor every evening to talk to me about his progress and how he's doing and um, it for the first three days it looked really bad she was saying you know he could die if he doesn't follow these steps and now it's just a waiting game we have to make sure his lungs, you know, start working again. So we relied on God for a lot. I mean, the, this was, you know, my house was a mess. I, I couldn't clean anything. Nobody had the energy to clean anything. Our, you know, provider, dad slash husband wasn't here and we were all just so vulnerable it, it was it's hard to describe how that felt um and what ended up happening is um my father-in-law and mother-in-law both ended up with covid they both ended up going in the hospital I don't remember if it was before or after Robert, my husband, went to the hospital. But it was around the same time, time frame. Um, my mother-in-law got well. She got better and she was able to go home. My father-in-law um, lost his battle. Um, he was already battling cancer. Um, he, he, the cancer in his skull was in remission and the cancer in his stomach, he, they couldn't do surgery on because of where it was in his stomach and the size of it. So they were going to do chemo again. And then he, when he got COVID, he just, his body just was too weak to handle yeah so he he passed away while my husband was still in the hospital himself and so that was really tough for everybody um they actually the hospital where my husband was they released him early so that he could go to the funeral he could attend the funeral and it was a really beautiful funeral um It was a really beautiful funeral 
And let me just say, you know, when my husband went to the hospital, I, I had to call 911 because he, he got pale, he couldn't breathe. And the ambulance had to come and take him to the hospital. And I remember that was Labor Day. So maybe it was September. Yes, it was end of August, beginning of September. So I thought he was just being a little dramatic. Like, you don't feel good. Welcome to the family. None of us feel good right now. But his oxygen was at like... 40, 50 something, you know, it's supposed to be at like 98, 97. Um, so he, he, he was pale and he just was not getting breath in his lungs. And it turns out he had pneumonia. He caught pneumonia as well. And so they admitted him in. And when the doctor started calling me in the evening, I started realizing this is more serious than I thought. I guess he's not just being a baby. He really, his body is really not handling this very well but it's not like I could really there's nothing you can do um, there's nothing you can do I mean we there was nothing you could do even if I wasn't sick at the time there was just it, it's a feeling of being helpless and being sick at the same time, you just can't deal with it. And like I said, all the days and the nights just kind of meshed together on that time period. It, it was really, really tough. And um, so once, when I, when he went to the hospital, he looked strong and healthy. Um, when he came out, he looked like an old man. It, he had lost a lot of weight. You know, he hadn't had his hair cut, so his hair was long. He was very thin, and he was in a wheelchair and on um, oxygen 24-7. And I had never seen him like that. You know, not he couldn't walk on his own. He couldn't move around the house on his own. And that really scared me because um, I thought, wow, um, how long is this gonna, how long is he gonna be, you know, this week, you know? But Lord, wow, is this uh, our new, our new life? Is this how it's gonna be? I just was so confused and overwhelmed and, and still healing myself. And that first night, you know, he, he needed help um, showering and brushing his teeth and things like that, and um, which was fine. But, you know, that first shower, he, he lost his breath and he got so out of breath that it... He, we had to kind of like hit his back a little bit, you know, he had to lay down on the bed and on his stomach and we had to like kind of press on his lungs to like jumpstart his lungs, I guess. I don't know. That's one of the things that we had to do just so he could catch his breath. It took him about 10 minutes to, you know, cool down for his body to catch breath. And so, I really thought it was gonna be a long time. Um, I thought this is this is really changing the dynamics of our home, you know. And I was I felt scared. I'm not gonna lie. I felt scared because you know I had my protector, my strong protector, who's now, you know, incapable, and and I have to step up and be the the caregiver and the protector. But it didn't last as long as I thought it would. He recovered pretty well. And um, before you know it, he got his a lot of his strength back. 
he had to be on oxygen for several months after um, he recovered. And it trickled, you know, down, so he didn't need it 24-7, but he did have to carry it with him around if we'd go anywhere or something, so that just in case, you know, um, he, he got short-winded, you know, he would have the oxygen there. But I am happy to say now, I don't remember what month it was, but he was able to get off of the oxygen completely. And completely um, return all the tanks to that company. So yay, <laughs> he's made a full re for a full recovery for the most part. Um, I know like towards the end of the year, maybe the beginning of this year, there was a couple of times when he wanted to do physical activity like cutting the grass or something or help clean up around the house and his body was just like, no, we're not having it. And so he he would get dizzy and and just have to rest the rest of the day. So the, those little changes, it, it's just amazing that what this virus can do to your body, you know, and you don't realize it until you get it, you know. So, you know, while we did unfortunately lose our my father-in-law um but we know he's in heaven that's what i believe and uh, he went home to be with the lord and um and my husband's okay with it uh, he was able to there's a family member that works at the hospital where my father-in-law was and she called him on on facetime and he was able to say goodbye to his dad over FaceTime and see him pass. Even though he couldn't physically be there, um, he was able to say goodbyes. So at least he got that, right? <laughs> so There's been a lot of things that have happened since that last video. You know, we, we went through that whole COVID thing in our, our family. And then in November 2021, our, um, our water, we had a, a water leak and it happened at the beginning of the month and to make a very long story and very boring story short, we ended up having to go the entire month of November with no running water in the house. And uh, had we had to pay to get, to repipe the entire house. Um, apparently we had old copper piping, they're outdated, they were leaks everywhere we found out under the foundation in the attic our water cooler or not our water what's it called the water heater that was leaking so we had to get a new water heater it was crazy um <laughs> but that got fixed and then we had um holes all over our walls and ceilings all over the house and we had to replace our flooring um, fortunately, our homeowners did pay t for the flooring, um, but we had to pay for everything else. So that was quite... You don't really think about how often you use water or how much water you use when you flush the toilet or brush your teeth or wash your hands. It's like you learn to appreciate like how important water is and cooking cleaning like you can't do anything without water it's crazy and then just last month in june we went <laughs> uh, uh, oh, the entire month without air conditioning and we're in texas so if anybody's from texas you know how hot it is um so 
one day in the car when we started the car the external temperature read 108 degrees which i'm sure it was because the sun was sitting directly on the car but it was 108 degrees it, and the hottest that we saw it get inside the house was 94 degrees check this out y'all we went 33 days with no ac in the house so think of how difficult it would be to cook and clean in 90 degree temperatures. Like you can't cool down at all. It, I say all of this, I, I say all of this to say that as you draw closer to the Lord, as you develop a relationship with Jesus your life you're gonna go through things that try to take your joy away from you and I think that is the main thing that the Lord was trying to teach us is no matter what happens around you just focus on me and my joy I give to you it's right here it's in me and that is something that through over the last year we have really learned on a deeper level and our faith has really grown so much since the last video that I made I I can say that I don't really I can't say that. I do still get triggered when I see a Jehovah's Witness trying to push doctrine on somebody. Or even just in the Christian community, if I see somebody that's trying to push their dogma on another Christian and making dumb accusations like... Well, if you don't believe this interpretation of this scripture, then, you know, you don't believe in the Bible. You don't have faith in the Bible. And I think what people tend to forget or not under, not forget, but they, they don't understand is that one person's interpretation doesn't mean that that is the only possible interpretation or that your interpretation is the only one that's correct because I don't think any religion really has a 100% understanding of the Bible at all and it's the Bible it's not even about religion it's about a relationship with Jesus that's what the whole Bible is about and and you can find evidence of that in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament um, but I forgot what my point was I still get triggered sometimes but I'm able to either not respond or you know just remove myself from the situation so that I'm not ugly because I can, <laughs> I can get a little ugly I'm not gonna lie I would say I am focusing on building my relationship with the Lord now instead of more being an activist uh, against Jehovah's Witnesses and so um, I don't really know what to do with the channel now um, I don't know if I am going to keep making videos or if I'm going to look at some of my older content and maybe repurpose them or re-record them um, in a better way, explaining what I meant. Um, because, you know, looking back at some of my older videos from a few years ago, I can see um, the immaturity that I had. And I think that the, the Lord has really matured my way of thinking um, so much within the last five years. 
it's almost unbelievable. You know, when I meet people at, at my church and they find out that I've only been a Christian for five years, they have a hard time believing it because they would have never thought, you never think. Um, and thinking how I used to behave as a Jehovah's Witness and even out in the world uh, with those Jehovah's Witness doctrines in my head, the way that I would think and behave was just so childish and so immature. I just, ooh, I cringe sometimes. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, I can't believe I behaved that way or thought that way. Do you guys ever feel that? Okay, I think it's been like 25 minutes now. Uh, I think I've done enough rambling, but um, if you guys have ideas on what to do with my channel or a topic maybe that um, I could cover. Just, you know, hit me up, let me know, and um, I'll get back with you guys. But um, till then, it's Lavender signing out. Love y'all. God bless.